Hello, I'm Katie Freeman with Freeman Furnishings and in today's video I'm going to show you how to take a piece of reclaimed barn wood and turn it into a wood and metal clock that is out of this world. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. From sapling to heirloom, every piece has a story, and it's our job to share that story. Alright, to start with, I'd like to thank Wagner Spray Technology for sponsoring today's video. They sent me one of their new heat guns, the Ferno 700, to use on any project of my choosing, so I decided to use it on this project. Since I'm working with old barn wood that is reclaimed, it had paint still remaining on the surface, and I wanted to remove that just to get a nice base to start with for the project. So to remove it, I set the Ferno 700 at 650, heated up the the surface and then used a putty knife to scrape off the paint. Just a quick note to add here that it is best when removing paint in this method using the heat gun and either a putty knife or a paint scraper that you should be working in a well ventilated area and with respiratory protection. And then I just used a sanding star in my King Arthur's sanding system to brush off any remaining debris and paint and it was ready to go. So I had this idea of turning this barn wood into something a bit more modern. I didn't want to go fully rustic with this project so I decided to try out my hand at creating a nebula, like a space nebula. So to do this I only wanted to do it for half the board though because I wanted to still kind of show something like we're going from the past into the future. I painted only half of it black which really was a black and purple and blue mixed together. I painted on some stars using these really cool embossing tools that have like these little balls on the end. So that's how I did the majority of the stars and then just use a brush to kind of you know make some make about four of them stand out a little bit more. And then it was time for resin. All right so just so you guys know I did learn um, uh, quite a bit about this technique from another YouTube channel and video and so I'm going to uh, link it down below so you can go check that out. It's a full you know, 20 minute tutorial on how to do this. So if you want to see in full, full detail how to do this, go check that out. So I'm working with some resin. This is resin I actually just picked up from the craft store. It's countertop resin. Um, and I mixed in some of these metallic pigments that I had and plus I did one that was like clear with just a little bit of super fine glitter in it and one with a little bit of glow powder in it. And I went with, the colors I went with were red and copper and purple and green and blue and a white plus the glitter and the glow in the dark. And so I started with clear with just the glitter in it because I know I wanted some area to be free of any real color but to have that like sparkly star field appearance and I did red and blue and green and really I just kind of went with what I felt I wanted it to look like and you can tell I'm not putting a lot on I'm just really kind of drizzling it on in certain areas trying to kind of match colors together like I did the red into the purple and then like the blue and the green together you know put a fine layer of this glow in the dark on top then I used the Wagner Verno 700 um, not only to get rid of bubbles but once you really get it heated up then the resin starts to flow and that's what you want you're going to use this flowing property and the air coming from the heat gun and you're going to kind of move it around. You're moving the pigment around and you're trying to disperse it a bit to get this effect that you're out in space and seeing this like super cool space nebula. And so I did this in several different uh, layers if you will. So I started with the main and then you see I come back in and I add in the copper. I do add in some more red and green and glow in the dark and glitter. Um, I'm just trying to get to a point where it's like I really feel like I get that feeling of being in space when you're looking at it. 
And what's really great as you're kind of uh, pushing it around and spreading it out you can still see all the stars down below so it really does give you that feeling of being in space and as I'm doing this I did three different layers I also end up finishing the plain side I just put clear resin on top of the plain side of the barn wood I put clear resin on top of because I want it to be a consistent finish, gloss finish, across the whole entire top of the part. Uh, so that's what I go ahead and do. And after I've done that and give it time to cure, I remove the tape. Now the tape, the painter's tape around the outside, that's a tip that I picked up from somebody who works with resin all the time. Um, I will also link her down below so you can check out her channel as well. But you will see like by putting the tape around there then I don't get the bumps of dried resin on the underside of the barn wood which would just have to be sanded down and can be a pain in the butt to deal with. And so this just makes it easy because you peel the tape right off and off comes the dried resin as well. And then I come back and I do put a top coat of resin over the top just to get some areas that, especially in the clear zone, didn't quite get all the way covered with resin so I wanted to make sure it was a nice level top all the way across so I did a top coat of resin. After that had cured then it was time to cut the piece of wood down to size. I will link to another video where somebody does make the metal ring themselves. Um, I did not make the metal ring myself. What I did do though was come up with the design of it and the size. It's a 14 inch diameter on the inside and I sent it to a local metal fabricator that I work with and he made the ring for me to my specifications based off of my drawing. So I cut the wood down to size. I needed to use the sander to get uh, the thickness where it was going to be attaching to the flat straps on the back of the ring. I needed to narrow that down a little bit so I used my drum sander to do that. And then it was time to get it ready to be assembled for the actual clock mechanism. So in order to do that, I used a, the, my drill press with a Forstner bit, and so I just did the outline of the clock mechanism and made sure I stayed kind of outside of that to create enough space to put the clock mechanism through and go down deep enough so that the center of the mechanism could come through, the threaded rod could come through, be flush on the front surface. Now some of you have heard me talk on other channels about not being able to find clock hands that I was really super happy with. There only seems to be like 10 or 15 designs uh, out there right now for clock hands and those are all that you can find anywhere on any place on the internet. So what I did is found some retro ones that I really liked the design of from like the 60s. They're called moon clock hands and I worked with my local makerspace called the Fab Lab in Iowa City and sent them the design and they helped uh, cut them out with a laser on some really super super thin plywood and then I painted them black and with a glitter over uh, coat and used them as my clock hands and I think it turned out fantastic. Now if you enjoyed this video please hit subscribe down below, give a thumbs up, leave a comment. I pretty much always reply to those comments and uh, I hope to catch you next time. Also another big thank you to Wagner Spray Technology for sponsoring this video and if you want to go check out their heat gun, their Ferno 700, check out the link below to go see that and all their other great products.